I play a song by Bob Dylan, it's called License to Kill. That's one of the most important songs he ever wrote. It's a song about uh, how he's talking about how that uh, uh, people, they murder people, the unborn, the, uh, the elderly. And he says uh, they, uh, they sell people's bodies like they do used cars. Yeah. And there's a woman on my block and she's sitting in the cold chill. And she says, who's going to take away his license to kill? <laughs> and uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, he's a very brave man. I mean, he uh, almost uh, sticking his neck underneath the uh, guillotine blade. He's standing up to uh, the, the killers of society. See, uh, Bob Dylan's a, a Jewish person. He was born right after World War II. And of course, people knew about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Gestapo, Nazi Germany, they killed, they killed probably more like, uh, 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 probably close to 8 million Jews. They, they killed, uh, about 6 million in concentration camps. But see, when, when Nazi Germany went through Poland, when they went through everywhere, they would find Jewish people. They had these mobile extermination groups. They just killed, they killed a lot of Jewish people there. And it's just unfortunate. And, uh, but anyway, uh, he, he's aware of the fact that, see, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, they, they want to kill people, just get rid of people that they don't like because of the religious beliefs or whatever. And they kill children, and then they kill the elderly. And see, uh, what they're doing is, so, like, for instance, over in, uh, in Holland, uh, you have some some people, some family members, they'll approach an elderly person in their family and they say, well, you, uh, you'll probably be better off to die. And there's nothing wrong with it, but they, they'll pressure a person to, uh, you know, acquiesce and uh, let, let a, uh, 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 a euthanasia a technician uh, administer some kind of lethal drug so they die. And they're, they're, they want to do the same thing here, and uh, so uh, you, you, you got uh, you got you, there's some people in this country that are uh, I don't know there's a ruthless uh, side to them, and they're going to try to get politicians in office that will not pass laws against them, and so they ought to pass laws that would prosecute people for for even approaching somebody. Uh, to allow uh, someone to uh, kill them. Uh, they should prosecute people for owning uh, lethal uh, drugs that would uh, kill people. They shouldn't even be, be able to possess them. And they had this Jack of working guy, they put him in jail. But, uh, but they, they still want to uh, pass laws and let this stuff uh, go on. And uh, I don't know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a crazy place. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they uh, were selling food uh, uh, right across the board. I mean, they're they're selling uh, they're selling food that sold a uh, pesticide uh, imbued with pesticide so uh, so bad that even rodents won't eat it. You can put you can put a, a banana out that's not organic, and a raccoon won't eat it. Uh, a rat won't eat it. And uh, and and they uh, you have people putting 50 coatings of pesticide on bell peppers. Uh, they can only put so much of one pesticide on a bell pepper, so they get around the law by putting 50 varieties. So if you're eating bell pepper and it's not organic, you're eating uh, bell pepper is just soaked with uh, pesticide. And so uh, I don't know. And then they got. Uh, the, the, uh, they, they have chicken. They they pump so many growth hormones in chickens. I mean, you can't eat this stuff. And uh, so uh, uh, I don't know. And uh, uh, like this taco shop down here, uh, they they put so much pepper uh, in the food you can't eat it. And uh, and a pepper is carcinogenic. You you, you I don't care what anybody says. You put pepper on your skin, it's going to irritate it. Everything that uh, that uh, that is uh, carcinogenic, that means it causes uh, tumors. It's very inflammatory, and uh, you put pepper on your skin, and it's hard to wash off pepper. So when you're eating, it goes into your digestive system, 
and it's hard for your body to get rid of that, so it's irritating your bowel, it's, it's causing inflammation, it's going to well, cause cancer there. And uh, they're, uh, uh, you get the feeling they're, they're, they're putting more virulent types of fungus in, in bread, and fungus, it wants to cause, uh, uh, what's this uh, disease where uh, your body can't deal with fungus infection? And, uh, it's with the GI system. And uh, so, uh, I don't know, you're probably Cambodia. better... Cambodia. You, you're probably better off to uh, stay away from a lot of leaven stuff, you know, and leaven bread, you know, and uh, pizza, whatever. And so, uh, uh, what you want to do is eat organic yogurt, that acidophilus, it crowds out uh, fungus in your digestive system. Drink that uh, organic kefir. It's got 12 varieties of uh, acidophilus, and uh, uh, you, you, and uh, uh, take it easy on juices, and then you get rid of uh, candida. That's a candida uh, fungus. It co wants to cause diverticulitis. It eats holes in the digestive system. And I knew this one lady. She was an elderly lady. She had diverticulitis, and uh, she could hardly eat nothing. And uh, uh, it, it seems like people didn't help her deal with this problem very well. If you get uh, good flora going in your digestive system, it helps get rid of this stuff. And so uh, I don't know. It's uh, your your health is something you gotta you gotta take care of because uh, uh, what it it it, it, it appears oh. like. Uh, uh, there are so many ways for a person to get sick. It's like they're, they're, they're causing people to get sick so that uh, they get in a situation where, uh, you know, they're terminally ill. They get terminally ill from cancer, heart disease. And so uh, it's real important to go organic and uh, get, get your uh, cranberry juice going. Every red juice kills cancer. Wow. Uh, cranberry juice, it's got resveratrol. Red grape juice uh, has resveratrol. And uh, pomegranate juice fights cancer. Red cherry juice fights cancer. Raspberries, anything red fights cancer. Or organic uh, strawberries are real important. They put so much pesticide on strawberries that I ate them and, uh, you know, I get sick. And, uh, so, and uh, blueberries, the same thing. It, it's getting to the point now where you can't, you can't believe how important it is, if you can, to get some money up and uh, buy, your, buy some land, buy some land and uh, have an elevated uh, a bed so that you don't have to bend over and you can grow your own stuff because uh, uh, you'd be surprised uh, how, much, how much really good food you can get when you grow it yourself. When I was in New Orleans, I used to, I used to guard this uh, uh, Bubba's wholesale produce, and this guy, this guy, I know he was, he, he was selling at least a hundred and fifty thousand, a quarter of a million dollars worth of stuff every week, and especially during Carnival. Carnival is the prelude to uh, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is just one day to, where where. New Orleans makes unbelievable amounts of cash. is a month and a half before Mardi Gras. And they have all these parades and people show up from all, all these high rollers show up all over from the United States to Mardi Gras because this is where the this is where the uh, the Mardi Gras is in full full tilt. And about a month and a half, all, 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 actually close to about a month and three quarters, they have all these parades going all over all over New Orleans, and thereby celebrating, uh, you know, the prelude to Mardi Gras. And uh, you have, you have the, uh, when I was there, they built from, from uh, 2004, uh, let's see, from 1998 to 2004, uh, they, they started about eight, eight, ho eight new hotels there, eight of them. They would, they would uh, revamp uh, uh, old, uh, uh, business buildings, turn them into hotels, but eight of them, and this place is packed. And I mean, every hotel room is packed, and a, and a lot of these hotel rooms, they're renting them out 
anywhere from $400 to $700 a night. And uh, a lot of them around five to six fifty, and and these high rollers show up, and and they will rent, you know, a room for three or four weeks at a time, and figure it out. That's thirty at least thirty five hundred dollars a week. So that's just, uh, almost ten about uh, about ten thousand, uh, ten to eleven thousand dollars they're spending just on on a place to stay, and some people. They got these suites, they're, they're renting them out for a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars a night. You got high rollers that show it up. And uh, and you got all these restaurants and they're selling uh, they're uh, uh, they're selling uh, a plate, you know, a dinner for about anywhere from about ninety to a hundred and fifty dollars a meal. And and this Bubba he, he, he's, uh, he's shipping, he's got, he's got about 33, 34 refrigerated trucks and they're pretty good size. And uh, the last place he, he's gonna deliver stuff to, he puts in first and then the first one he's gonna deliver to, he, he puts that last. And, and I watch him and these trucks, they go out and they're going all over, all over New Orleans, especially in the French Quarter, all these restaurants all over everywhere. And these French and these restaurants uh, on uh, Saint on Saint Charles, up there around Tulane, they got them all over, all over uh, uh, New Orleans. And he's delivering all this stuff to these rich people, uh, uh, these mansions and stuff. Uh, these people they got refrigerated uh, ice boxes in their basements and stuff. And they they don't a lot of these people they don't they don't go to the grocery store. They have everybody everything delivered to them. They get all this fresh produce, a lot of it's organic. He gets organic oranges, regular oranges, organic tangerines, mushrooms, spinach, kale, all this stuff. And, and these people, uh, they got money to burn. In these restaurants, they got money to burn. They buy uh, all these bags of potatoes, sweet potatoes, asparagus, expensive mushrooms. He's got like six or seven varieties of mushrooms he delivers. He's, he's, he's shipping out uh, cantaloupe and honeydew melon to, uh, to these restaurants and uh, green beans, everything. You name it, he's got it going. And, and, he's, take, and he's, he's making tons of cash. And uh, every, uh, on, a, on a regular week, every Monday, he's got a tractor trailer load of tomatoes and he's paying $5,500 for every tractor trailer load. And during Mardi Gras, uh, he's got two tractor loads, and sometimes three during during the carnival. And everybody is making so much money during carnival, you can't believe it. I mean, he's making um, just hundreds of thousands of dollars. And these, and, and he'll walk up to uh, to a tractor trailer load or whatever it is. And he just swipes a card, and and that and it goes. The money goes to their bank account, and then this guy, uh, 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 they put a they put a ramp, and then they start picking up these these uh, pallets full of uh, tomatoes. And there's a hundred boxes for each pallet, and there's five five pallets. And he's and all he's doing, he's paying he's paying about ten dollars for a, a ten ten to. Two, 12, about 10, 12, sometimes $15 for a, for a big box of tomatoes. And there's a hundred boxes on there. He's getting tomatoes for, for dirt cheap. And, uh, and he's making a ton of cash on all these tomatoes because he's selling tomatoes like, uh, uh, like, like a, a dollar a pound or more. And he, he, can, you, can you see how much money he's making? Yeah. I mean, he's making money hand over fist. Off organic food. No, these are just regular tomatoes. Oh, really? And, oh, yeah, they're not. Some of them are. Now, he does get organic ones, uh, but he, and, and see, that's just uh, the regular tomato like this, and that's just one variety. He sells, like, the little grape-sized tomatoes, the, the elongated tomatoes, that there's a tomato on the, on the vine like that. So it's not a real big one. It's about like that. Then he sells them like this. You got the long kind, the ones like this, the big ones, and the grape grape size, and then and then that's not, and then he's got the bell peppers. Hey, good job with that, please. Then he's got mushrooms, he's got green beans, he's got spinach, these big bags of spinach. He's got all kinds of stuff he's pushing, 
and and uh, and uh, 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 these people. Uh, I mean, he's making money uh, hand over fist. Uh, you can't believe how much money he's making. And he's got all kinds of fruit, strawberries. There was a whole pallet. It's about a half a pallet of strawberries. He says you could just have them all, and I'll leave them in here. And we ain't got time to you know, sort through all this stuff. We want them good, but we got all we want, and you can just have the rest of them. And I would every morning I would go in there. I would get a couple of quarts of strawberries, and I would uh, pick out the bad ones, and I get it maybe about a about a quart and a quarter out of a ball, out of two quarts. I'd just take them over to Jackson Square and give some of them to people. But strawberries, I mean, they, these things are expensive. And uh, he'd give you blueberries and persimmons and kiwi fruit. He gets everything. But the idea being is you get some land and you start growing your own stuff, you'd be surprised uh, how, how much uh, how much money you would save and how much better you're going to eat because no, most people don't have a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month to pay on produce. All this free stuff I, I used to get from Bubba's, if I added it up every month, I know it's going to be way over a thousand dollars because I'm getting tomatoes, I'm getting eggplant, kiwi fruit, I'm getting cantaloupe, honeydew melon, watermelon blueberries, strawberries, strawberries, all kinds of stuff. I get all kinds of stuff. I get a big box of stuff every morning, every morning. <laughs> and uh, really good tomatoes. I go over to Jackson Square and I give them some of these tarot readers and stuff, like Lena, the gypsy lady. I, I get all kinds of free stuff. And if I added that stuff up every month, I know it would be way over a thousand because I'm getting anywhere from uh, uh, 30 40 to 70 80 dollars worth of stuff every morning I get everything I can put on a bicycle there's stuff a lot of times uh, I let sit there because I can only carry so much on my bike I mean I get a big box of stuff and he doesn't care I mean he's gonna throw it away anyway if it's a, a cantaloupe that's got a little nick on it he won't sell it because these rich people you can't sell a, a nick cantaloupe or a nick watermelon there's a little something on it, he won't sell it. And he just won't. I mean, he's, he's, not, he's not worried about, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars worth of stuff. He's making, he's making a, a hundred thousand, a lot of times he's making a hundred thousand dollars a week. He's making that much money. Because when you got a refrigerated tr truck jam packed, and, and he's uh, 20 or 30, 30, 30, 35 trucks going out every morning. And then about a third of these trucks that go out, they come back and get and I make a second trip. Do you see how much money he's making? <laughs> I mean, you're packing all that stuff. And uh, I mean, he packs uh, potatoes. He's got sweet potatoes, big 50 pound bags. And he's got onions, big onions. And these restaurants are buying all this stuff. And uh, but these people, I mean, I mean to tell you, uh, I mean he's got a gold mine going, and but but the thing of it is, if you get your own land and you're growing your own strawberries, your own blueberries, your own blackberries, your own raspberries, your own sweet potatoes, your own red potatoes, and you grow your own lemons, tangerine trees, orange trees, and uh, you, you're growing, you got a a, a vineyard going with really good Muscava grapes and the regular red grapes. And all the stuff will grow, I mean, like crazy around here. And you'd be surprised at the hundreds of dollars of stuff that you will go through. I mean, hundreds of dollars. I mean, uh, when you get a vineyard going and you get this this vineyard going really good and you got all these hundreds of, hundreds of pounds of grapes and you can eat a whole, you could you could eat a whole a huge bag of uh, organic red grapes every day. You're getting all that resveratrol. You're getting all the health benefits from all these blueberries you're growing, and strawberries, all this vitamin C, and they're super good. You get a really good variety. You start growing all this stuff. You'd be surprised. I mean, it gets into the thousands of dollars, and it and it and it helps your. Uh, your health immensely and you can grow your own pumpkins and and 
this pumpkin, it's got a lot of nutrition in there. You get alpha and beta, uh, alpha carotene and beta carotene, and you can take, you can make uh, pies with this stuff, and you can take and put this pumpkin into your soup. You can grow lentils and beans, and you can make your own soup and put this uh, pumpkin in there, and see so you get all that vitamin A, and see it's fresh, I mean it's super good. And then you can take those seeds, and those seeds are jam-packed full of nutrition. I mean, I eat those pumpkin seeds and uh, sunflower seeds. It's got a lot of vitamins in that stuff. And you'd be surprised at, uh, at the thousands of dollars uh, of stuff that you can eat and how immensely uh, your health will improve because you're getting all this dense nutrition. And you can grow those, or you can have organic carrots and you can juice this stuff and drink fresh carrot juice every day. It's organic. You're getting all that beta carotene. And see, when you, when you eat that beta carotene and that pumpkin, put it in your, that lentil soup because protein helps your eyes absorb the carotene and, and lutein a lot better than if you don't have protein in your diet when you eat it. And like when you eat that yogurt, put those mandarin oranges on there because the vitamin C helps your body absorb the calcium and magnesium. And then you can you can grow that watercress, get that vitamin K, and that's going to help. Uh, that's going to help you a whole lot. It, it keeps uh, the calcium building up in your arteries. You get those oranges going, and you can squeeze that fresh orange juice, drink it with a straw, and you're getting all that rich folate. It flushes fat and cholesterol out of your heart. But see, when you could get when you could get that, when you get all those fresh fruit and vegetables rocking, get that fresh kale because it's got a lot of dense uh, uh, chlorophyll in there. That organic spinach in a little space, like 12 by 12, you could grow all the spinach you could possibly eat. <laughs> but you can get that fresh kale and you can juice that stuff, and you get those power greens going. And, uh, and so you get all these rich antioxidants in your body and, uh, and all this really, really good food. And uh, I believe if you eat the right stuff and enough of it and you take care of your body, uh, that you, 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 your body almost, uh, it anti-ages. The, the youthfulness of, of your youth, it returns. And so... Uh, uh, I believe if a person eats right and you got this super rich, uh, nutritionally dense food, you know, I believe uh, uh, the scripture says that uh, 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 in the future that a person uh, who, who dies at, at 100, that, that's a young age. I believe we're getting to the point now if you will start eating right and, and, and get all these really good foods going, that you know a person can live to I don't know 140 150 years old I think if you if you put if you put the brakes on uh, you know uh, uh, pulling out uh, uh, the free radicals that cause aging then see your tissue don't get damaged you got all this antioxidant rich food it just it it just it just stops the aging process to zero. And in fact, you start going back, going back the other. And the, the thing with this, you gotta keep free radicals out of, your, out of your diet, and you gotta keep these harsh chemicals off your skin and out of your diet, chlorine and fluoride, and keep all this, the, yes. the, these harmful chemicals. Gotta stay, gotta stay away from breathing other people's smoke. And uh, uh, if you could, uh, 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 live in a part of Florida where they got all these forest fires where you breathe that damn smoke from forest fire smoke. This, this is a job you don't want, uh, being a firefighter, because you're breathing that smoke. That can't be good for it. Carbon dioxide, every, everything. And, uh, I mean, it just is, this is, this is not a job you want. And, uh, so, but the thing of it is, uh, uh, that's one of my goals. And then see, uh, you could have a house and have a have these uh, red tile shingles, and uh, so you don't have to put a new roof up all the time. And then part of your roofing, you want to have solar panels, have a good number of them because see, you get electricity for free. 
and then have a, a, a really a good sized swimming pool and then have have a, sort of like a, a marble or concrete uh, slightly sloping uh, walkway around it and see and then have have it where the water that uh, that rains on on that marble or uh, the concrete is slightly sloped all that water goes into your swimming pool and you have a filtration system and you don't put chlorine in there and you don't tell the government nothing because see uh, they don't want you collecting water but you say I got a swimming pool and they, they, they got they ain't none of their business and you just tell them to take a hike you, if they say something you got a diving board and, and it's and with little ladders this is my swimming pool but see you're collecting water that you could use to water all your plants that's making you uh, hundreds of dollars of free food that's super good see and it ain't got no chlorine in it you got a filtration system in there, so uh, uh, you don't have, uh, you know, uh, algae growing in there. See, you don't want that. You, you wanna, you wanna make it look like a swimming pool, and you can go swimming if, if you want, because all you're using it really <laughs> for is, is to water your plants. And you can have this, these elevated uh, beds where you ain't got to bend over, and you use it, uh, you use a sterile, uh, fertile soil. Everything's organic, see? And you ain't got weeds growing because you're using stale soil. And all you gotta do is reach over and pick up all the strawberries, all the blueberries, all the raspberries. Yeah. And you can make your own jam and stuff. I mean, you can make marmalade with your, from your orange trees. Everything's organic. And you gotta keep the crazies away from, from your stuff because you don't need somebody coming in and uh, <laughs> messing stuff up. You know, yeah. they may want, uh, and then you can get these, uh, do it like you gotta do it like uh, like the Dutch do it. You can have some of the stuff, some of the stuff you're growing inside, like a uh, uh, like a glass house. Uh, over there, they don't have a lot of land, and they'll take. They got a like a, a fairly good sized city block with with uh, four stories of uh, gardens, and they're growing everything: bell peppers, everything, fruit, you name it. But it's four stories. And they got these bugs that uh, get rid of the, the, the unwanted bugs. And they and a lot of this stuff is organic. And these people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, growing uh, all this food in, uh, in one of these uh, uh, glass house gardens. And, they're, and they're, there's about four stories. And see, they get, uh, they don't have a lot of land, so they're using multi-layered multi-floored uh, gardens and the light shines through there they got some kind of special glass and the light shines through to the other places and they got it they got everything designed so that they can they can they can get sunlight uh, down in there and uh, grow all this stuff and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars and over in Israel they got thousands of acres uh, where they're growing citrus trees that's how th these people are over in Israel. These people are making so much money. I mean, you can't believe how much cash these people are making. And uh, what they did was uh, see after uh, uh, first of all, they had to get they had to get they had to they had to uh, get rid of uh, the British uh, uh, control of everything, and eventually they did. And then see, they uh, uh, they they took all this money that they had, and people over here, and these Arabs, uh, you know, they they had a whole they owned a whole lot of this land over there, and and see a lot of it it was swamp land, and desert, but they didn't care. See, they're going to take it, revamp this, they're going to drain all this stuff, and then they're going to start irrigation stuff. And uh, they go, they gonna turn all this land into growing citrus trees, and they bought all this land from people. And these Arabs, they didn't like it. They complained that they they were taking over everything. But they're the ones that sold it to them for dirt cheap. Uh, uh, they didn't want it. They they didn't want to they didn't want to uh, get this land uh, going. They don't care. They're they're making money off oil, and they have stuff shipped to them because they got they got uh, money to burn from uh, uh, 
you know, sell oil to people. They don't even refine it. These, these Arabs over there, they're starting to do that, but uh, these people are so, so lazy, you can't believe it. All they care about, well, we know enough to, uh, to get oil out of the ground, but we don't care about refining it. You want to do that, you do that yourself. But see, instead, instead, uh, but they, they, they got so much of it uh, that they're they're too lazy to, to mess with it. But some Kuwait, the, the, they got the United States. They uh, they go over and got uh, they got refineries. But see, for every barrel, for every barrel of oil that Chevron gets. They make a ton of cash. Chevron's got it down pat because see Chevron, I call them Chevron because most of the time they miss the numbers. But, che but Chevron, they find the oil and then they refine this stuff into all kinds of oil products, oils, lubricants, gasoline, gasoline additives, plastics, everything. Chevron is making so much money, you can't believe it. And then on top of that, on top of developing products, they got the ultimate uh, retail system. They got these gas stations all over everywhere, and these people, they are selling gasoline, all these uh, petroleum products, and they are making money nine ways to Sunday. They find it, and then they then then they refine it into all, the, uh, into all these different products, tire, roofing, everything. They got they got it going from A to Z. And then they got a retail uh, uh, sales distribution. And so their profit margin, I mean, it's incredible. Where, where, where people, they just find it and sell it, their profit margin is just what they can sell on the oil. But for them, they're making tons of cash because they got all these different products they make. And then they get, then they get the highest price because they're selling at retail in the gas station. They're selling gasoline, retail, all these oils and additives, every, all this stuff. They're selling it at retail prices. They don't sell wholesale to nobody. They don't care. Uh, they're, they're selling it. Uh, they delivered all this gasoline, all this stuff to, to gas stations that they own. And so their profit margin is, is unbelievable. And uh, uh, most of, about, about, I say about eight times out of ten, probably closer to nine times out of ten, Chevron misses the numbers. Every, almost every time they miss the numbers. The, you got you got uh, Wall Street saying they, they're supposed to make so much a share. Well, Chevron, almost all the time, they miss the numbers. But, but you'll notice they don't miss the numbers by much. They don't miss the numbers by much. Harley, and then sometimes they... Uh, they, they make the numbers and then exceed the numbers. But even when they miss the numbers, it never goes down. It just doesn't. I mean, <laughs> m most stocks, most companies, if they miss the numbers, their stock may go down 10, 15, 20 percent. When Chevron misses the numbers, it don't go down at hardly at all. It just doesn't. Yeah. It don't go down. The only thing that makes Chevron go down is the price of oil per barrel going down. And and see, it's pretty consistent now. So, I don't know. It uh, you, you, you buy some per, per, uh, Chevron Preferred stock, and all the time you're getting that sugar div, and you keep pushing that money back in. Every time you get that sugar div, you just take that money and buy some more shares. And uh, it's going to give you like about what? Uh, three and a half, four percent. Plus, you get all the upside, and uh, this stuff is going to go up 25, 30, 40 percent a year. It just keeps on going up. And then they have stock splits, and so you're you're not you're you, you hold on to Chevron long enough, and what happens is, uh, you you uh, you have a thousand shares. You keep holding this stuff. Pretty soon, you got two thousand, and pretty soon that two thousand goes to four thousand. So you keep holding Chevron log it up, and this stuff is going to make you filthy rich. And then every share that you got, you're going to get that sugar dip. You just <laughs> keep getting that sugar dip. I mean, uh, uh, there's people, they started out with 10,000 shares way, way, way back when, and they split, 
Now they got 20, now they got 40, now they got, they got 80,000 shares or more. And these high rollers, they got 80,000 share, 80,000, 80, 100,000 shares of stuff. And on every share, they're getting that sugar div and they're getting that sugar div every quarter. It may be what, 1%, 1.5%, one but uh, every quarter, they, uh, when you get 1.5% and you got 100,000 shares of stuff, I mean, it adds up. All this money, it starts to add up. And then you keep buying, buying more of that stuff. Uh, Ch Chevron, uh, for the person that, that held on this stuff, and he's been holding this stuff for 25, 30 years. I mean, he's got money to burn. I mean to tell you. And then, if you got money to burn because you've been pushing your money in the right places, and uh, a lot of these people, what they do is they'll buy some oil, oil stocks, get this sugar dip, and then uh, so a lot of this other money they got laying around, uh, they only maybe put maybe three or four percent of this money uh, in a no low mutual fund. Most of the time they don't really stock pick. They'll maybe buy uh, some oil stocks, you know, and that's about it. And then the rest of it, uh, they push it into a no low mutual fund. They wait till everything crashes and then they, they'll buy a no low mutual fund. And uh, in between time, what they, a lot of times, uh, they, they do several things. Uh, one of the main things they do is they buy, like somebody that's got uh, 15, 20 million dollars, he'll take about, he'll take about, about 18, 19 million of that, and he'll, he'll buy four or five pages of tax-free municipals. And then when every, and then when the interest rates uh, go up, so, what, as soon as they get close to about six and a half percent, He'll take all his money that he's got in no low mutual funds. He'll get out of that and, and he'll keep his tax free municipals. And then he buys inflation adjusted treasuries. And so he's going to get like seven and a half, eight percent a year on these inflation adjusted treasuries. And he'll take that money and push it into uh, inflation adjusted uh, uh, treasuries. And so he's got his tax-free municipals and those inflation-adjusted treasuries. And during those years, he's probably going to get close to about uh, about 7%, something like that. But most of that's tax-free money. And then so, and then when everything gets hammered, see, when, when interest rates start to go up, then, then the economy starts to slow down, the stock market goes down. So when it gets around 6.5%, they, they get out of their no-load mutual funds. And then they, they push it into tre, tre, uh, inflation adjusted treasuries and tax free municipals. And then when everything gets hammered, everything gets hammered real bad and, the, and the, uh, everything goes back down, then they'll take about a three or four percent of their money and they'll push it back into, uh, uh, you know, uh, four or five, you know, uh, no low mutual funds. And they, uh, and so, that's the way they do it. And so they, for their tax free municipals, they're going to get close to about 6% a year on that. And then with this other money that they got in uh, no low mutual funds, a half a dozen of them, they'll take maybe, uh, you know, 3 or 4, 5% at the very most. But most of them, especially if somebody's got 15, 20 million, they're going to take maybe 3 or 4% of that at the most. And between, uh, the no low mutual funds going up and tax free municipals, they're going to get close to 10%. And so when you got 10%, it keeps, it keeps going up and most of that's tax free money. Tax free, every, every time they get that, that, that tax free money, uh, they, they keep pushing that stuff into more tax free and it compounds. And see what these, what, what I found out that these rich people do. They would rather they would rather be patient and wait three or, three or four years, maybe five years, and in four or five years, the money that they have now, if they put a hundred percent of it into uh, no low mutual funds, uh, 
if the stock market messes up and they don't make good decisions, they can lose 25, 30% of that money. Instead of losing money, uh, they keep making what, if, if that, if that, if that no low mutual fund, if it, if it is going to make about 20%, uh, 15 to 20% a year, uh, then if they put it in tax-free municipals, because the, the money compounds and that, and that money keeps, you got a, a, a much greater pile of cash getting generating interest. The interest on on the money that they that they that they get from these tax-free municipals it keeps building up, and the money they get from tax-free municipals, about five years down range, is about as much money as they're making right they would make now if they put 100% of it in the stock market, but they don't have to worry about it going down or their money messing their money up, and so you got people some people. They put a ton of cash in, in these uh, no low mutual funds, and they did manage your money right. And some of these people, they lose 30 and 40 percent. And and so if the stock market goes up, see, the, the, their uh, the principal is down almost half or close to half of what they had. So it, it's a lot harder to get get that money back up to where it was. But see, the person that never messes his money up, he's making, he's, he keeps on making more and more money and it never messes up. And so he, he's got this gigantic pile of cash. And once you get up around, once you get up around uh, 10, 12 uh, million, right through there, you're making almost a million dollars a year on, on interest and it's tax free. And so every year, they're adding a million or more uh, uh, to their pile of cash, and that money is making money for them because they just don't spend it. They put it in tax-free municipals, and that that million dollars that's going to drag in another sixty to a hundred thousand, depending on how they're how they're pushing the money around. But mostly, it's tax-free municipals. They're getting about sixty sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars. Uh, a year, and and think about it. Every five years, that's over three hundred thousand dollars, and it's tax free, and it keeps on getting bigger and bigger, and it and they never mess they never mess their money up, and so uh, when you get when you get a great big pile of cash, see five five six years down the road, you're making more money, and it's all tax free than if you put it in. Uh, no low mutual funds that's getting taxed and then you're taking the risk of losing money. So these rich people, what they do is they make tons of cash because they never, they use patience and, and tax-free municipals and they buy these AAA rated and they buy them all over the place. And they stay away from uh, uh, cities where they're, they're having trouble, uh, where they're bankrupt. And they keep they they keep piling all this cash, and they and then and then on top of that, they got uh, they got uh, they got uh, people like Chevron sending them a check every quarter, and they, and they and then they keep turning around, and they push, they they keep turning around with that sugar div, and they keep buying more Chevron with it, and, and you and you can talk to these people. They're like me. They don't call them. But they don't call them Chevron. They call them Chevron. They they do that because they don't they don't want to give the dignity of calling them Chevron Chevron when they keep on missing the numbers. You don't people keep on missing the numbers. I mean, you're mad at them in a way. <laughs> but but Chevron, I mean, I don't know. They. Uh, Did you know uh, you're uh, one of the most awake people in the you, planet you, right you, now? You you ain't gonna you ain't gonna mess up your buddy. See, these people, uh, uh, they don't give a frip. They don't give a frip about this stock or that stock or a double, triple, and all that kind of crud. Because uh, these people uh, that want to be the stock picker, you know what's that going to happen? They're going to get cleaned out. They, 
the, the, but money's fake. It's just a fake system that's been created by the government to make us feel like we need they to make money to. They don't care have about. Reason. They don't care about the stock picker. They don't care nothing about all that. They're by triple A rated, tax free municipals, and then when interest rates get hammered, you know, and uh, they were up around eight or nine, eight or a half nine percent. See, they're done gone way, way ahead of time. They don't care about all that anymore. And uh, uh, they're pushing their money into uh, inflation-adjusted treasuries. That's what they're doing. They're getting their seven and a half, eight percent there. They, if it keeps on going up, well, that's good because they're getting, they're getting inflation-adjusted treasuries. And see, they don't care nothing about all that. And see, all these people, they're getting hammered and cleaned out. And, and take it to the cleaners and, and they listen to people you know trying to sell them a, you know a, a stock system with a little briefcase with a little emergency light and stuff on it oh, that's that's kind of, that's hilarious for them that's all kooky they don't even listen to these people no more people like Jim Cramer they don't care about him he's a joke they, they think that's funny you mention his name they start laughing I mean, you know, all these people are kooky. And then, and then uh, these people, th th they want to sell my duties, all kind of crud. Oh, that's funny, too. They, they just turn that stuff off. They, they, they feel like calling these people up and giving a piece of their mind. Uh, that's just dumbass stuff. <laughs> and uh, all this annuity stuff, these people are just making commissions. And then they're ripping you off, and they, they go do no good. And they go tell you how well, you might have losses, you know, and you might lose somebody. You gotta be prepared for losses, all that kind of crap. See, all that stuff is Looney Tunes, and they they still they they still they, they don't have nothing to do with all that. And uh, a lot of these people, uh, they they don't uh, uh, they don't they don't put money in real estate either, because uh, a lot of these people they still all mess with. Uh, uh, the hassle of renting to people and causing trouble and all that uh, silly stuff and they didn't they just don't want they just don't want all that headache they just don't care and uh uh so the the, the people the people uh that they got the tons of cash what they're doing they're doing one of two things pretty much either they got a corporation or a business and this corporation or business is making tons of cash, or they got tons of cash and they're pushing the tax free municipals, and then they put a small percentage in like a half a dozen. They don't put, when they buy no low mutual funds, they just don't buy one. They'll buy, they'll have a whole page of them. If, if they're gonna spend like a million dollars on, on uh, they're gonna invest like a couple million dollars They'll have like a, a whole page, a, a couple pages of no low mutual funds. They just don't put it in one. They'll, they'll like have a half a dozen. They'll have a they'll have a whole page of them. And if you if you were to look at their portfolio of tax fee municipals, they would like have like uh, six or seven pages of it. You know, that many. And then you'll see them like they'll have like uh, they'll have like maybe a few preferred like a few oil stocks getting that sugar div that they have from way back when and uh, or they may have uh, some AT&T or something that they had that they bought way back when and th they just don't care what it does and th the AT&T is going to give them new shares and a uh, sugar div and all that kind of stuff and uh, uh, sometimes uh, now now way back when when, sh when Verizon was taking a cut out of AT&T a lot of people they had uh, they had uh, they had Hilton was trying to buy out was trying to buy out Star Wars and AT and T and it was kind of stupid because see these people they got enough cash this is all crazy Hilton <laughs> Hilton they got enough cash to buy out Star Wars and AT and T this stuff went up went up uh, way up over a hundred dollars and you had a lot of people well let's just take our money and go home. 
So they got out of at t and then they keep track of what, what, how Verizon's competing with at t And what happened was at t kept on going down. So all these people, what happened is they would do their homework on at t They didn't have that much money. They maybe have like a couple hundred thousand, these rich, these rich high rollers. They may have a couple hundred thousand, maybe a quarter million dollars that they made off of uh, uh, Hilton try to try to buy out uh, AT and T. These people ain't got nobody. They can't buy them out. This is a blue chip corporation. Well, <laughs> fiddle faddle AT, fiddle faddle yeah. Hilton. They they got nowhere near the money to buy out. I uh, see Star Wars is part of AT and T. See, and so they got nobody. They they can't borrow enough money. They just ain't got nobody. That remember that remember that Hilton uh, girl, that blonde hair girl. Well, her family was trying to buy out, they're crazy, they're trying to buy out Starwood and Hilton and at t And th this is, uh, this is uh, like, uh, I don't know. Excuse me. A hundred billion dollars. Do George's Tavern is? No, nah, don't tell where the uh, pusher the man is. Here? Don't tell where the pusher hey, man is. All the way down here, babe. Don't tell where the pusher man is. You know why I go to the pusher man? That's the, the damn pusher man. Don't okay. tell that word. <laughs> I so, to, I so what to... happened was all the stuff went down and when at t went down at uh, ten dollars a share they started buying all the stuff back it's, they pushed all this money there but see uh what i'm trying to tell you is that uh, you could buy some land and grow some stuff you don't have to buy you know apartment complexes all that crazy stuff there's people doing that like but but huh. the, but, but, but the, a lot of the high rollers that are interested in, in money and it's not gonna mess up, and it's easy money, they ain't gotta worry about it all the time, is uh, they buy a lot of these tax-free municipals, and then, and then when the interest rate gets gets up around six and a half, almost 7%, then they get out of their no-low mutual funds. They just don't really keep, they just don't care about uh, the unemployment and gross national product numbers. All that. They don't really keep track of that. They keep track of interest rates because interest rates are gonna hammer uh, the housing market because the housing market is going to slow down to zero when interest rates go up and that's going to hammer more or less the rest of the economy that's going to hammer everything so when the interest rates give up around six and a half seventy percent then they start pulling out of their no low mutual funds and they buy tax-free municipals and they just uh, and they buy a few treasuries they'll buy like uh, when everything gets hammered they'll buy Inflation adjusted treasuries and they'll buy like uh, they'll, they'll buy it with like uh, uh, time durations of about uh, You know uh, One to three years. They don't they don't generally buy five years one to three years and so after everything gets hammered Then then they go back into buying tax-free municipals and no low mutual funds. So that's how they do it I mean they just don't they, they don't subscribe to Bob Brinker's uh, market timer or nothing that i have to tell you i've i've seen you play for years and i have been drawn to you in the music that you create and i have been so shy until just now and i wish i had come here years ago because like i've telling you before you know things that not everyone wants to hear about the organic food everyone's like this they want to keep eating the chemicals they want to go eat and drink and self-destruct if we'll you don't see. mind, I would love to hug you. I, my friend is uh, waiting. You give me a hug. You give me oh, hug. you're so great. I like, uh, thank you so it, much. I, anyway, it's so much. Anyway, uh, the uh, somebody helps me. I figure, well, I help them. But eventually, you stay on track. You get you and invest your money, and uh, and see uh, where you can grow your own stuff. And it's just and, and, and it's just about as much effort. Uh, to walk out there and just pick pick blueberries as it is to pick blueberries off the shelf. I want you to know shelf. that you have helped and me so much. Everything is free. <laughs> everything is free, and it's better. The stuff at the store, most of the stuff, like these blueberries are show they they sell you a little bit of tray, a little bitty tray, like for four dollars. And well, you can <laughs> grow everything, and it's free. I mean, it's obviously the way to go and and you can grow all this stuff and it's not really not all that much work and see uh, and 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 nobody uh i mean if you're going organic you want to buy all these blueberries yeah. the organic strawberries you could spend 40 50 dollars you know 
four or five times a week. But see, if you got your own little garden and you're growing everything, everything you're is so free. Right. I'm and, gonna shake your hand and, and I will be back. And see, uh, and see all this stuff, all this free stuff you get uh, uh, when you get your uh, get your leg going. I mean, you'd be surprised. It adds up. You could you could eat. You could have a, a, a you could go through a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars a month, and see that's what fifteen thousand. Uh, Eighteen, twenty thousand dollars uh, worth of stuff a year, easy. Right. And then see, uh, but most people they got they got eighteen, twenty thousand dollars to give to lose Dixie or whoever, and then it ain't no good anyway. It's yeah. got pesticide all over it. That's true. And so, uh, when you, uh, if you get some land, see that land will pay for itself time and time again. And and then so you can grow you can grow some stuff and you can sell it if you want. And you don't have to sell it, no wholesale. You can sell it retail, uh, but you don't have to do that. The rich people, the rich people, the real rich people, they don't do that. They give money to charities. They got tax-free municipals, or they have a business, a corporation going. Look, look, look like uh, the new, the Snell Newman. Uh, all this, all this money they make, they give it to charity. But, but these people, uh, the the way. The way they make tons of cash is they, 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 got, they got pretty good money rolling in and they never mess it up. Never. They never mess their money up. <laughs> they always get that surefire money and the pile of money that they got right now, if they'll wait five years, the money that they get between now and five years, and they push that money into tax free municipals, they're gonna make money, the same amount of money or more, five years from now, than they would putting all their money in no low mutual funds or stock picking. But, they, but these people that do that, a lot of times, they get hammered. I mean, they lose 40, 30, 40, sometimes 50% or more of all their money put in a tax free municipals and trying to be a stock picker. They get cleaned out. And I mean cleaned out. And then they keep putting it in the in these stock free municipal in these uh in these uh, no low mutual funds and and even and even after five, six, eight years, if the stock market stays on track, they barely uh, got uh, they barely get back what they lost. But the guy that keeps putting money in tax-free municipals and never messing his money up, he's doubled and tripled his money. And I mean, he's living on Easy Street. I mean, he is <laughs> living on Easy Street. I mean, uh, he. Uh, and, and when you keep on not messing your money up, as soon as you get up around 10, 12 million dollars, you're getting a million dollars every year every year add it up six uh six hundred uh seven hundred thousand or more uh, uh, i mean uh, and then see they, uh, and it, they just never mess their buddy up and all this stuff of, of people uh you know uh the, the person that that is uh uh clamoring for money and desperate and he wants to buy annuities like that crud and uh, this ain't the way to do it. I mean, these people, uh, they get the, these big commissions and then uh, you're, you're dealing with the sh shysters. That's all they are. <laughs> but but you, you keep on taking that, that surefire money. It just never messes up. And, and uh, it just keeps building up. And these rich people, I mean, I'm telling you, you, you go up and down, you go up and down uh, a where they and if you were to knock on on the doors of these people that all that 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 you know especially down around Pontevedra that you know got tons of cash <laughs> that uh, they're not they're not stock picking all nobody does that they they'll they'll they take maybe three three percent of their money and they're and when everything gets hammered they buy so they'll buy eight or ten no low mutual funds. And between their no low mutual funds that so they got three or four percent in and these tax-free municipals they're going to take in close to ten percent 
And when you got all these millions of dollars rolling, and you got 10% of, of uh, even if it's five, even if it's just uh, five million, that's a half a million dollars. And and figure it out. In, in five years, that's two and a half billion. And that two and a half billion, when you're getting when you're getting six percent on that, do you see it just it just keeps compounding. What once once you get into the real deal money, once you get into real deal money, and you never mess it up, it just keeps it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when you're not spending no money hardly at all for electricity. You're not spending no money for water, and you're not spending no, hardly anything for food. Nothing. I mean, almost absolutely <laughs> nothing. And all this money keeps rolling in. All you do is pay a little bit of taxes, and that's about it. But when you, but you get things set up, you, uh, you, 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 uh, you're, you hardly pay any of that. See, the the way the way to the way to deal with it is. You you don't you don't lose your money having to spend spend it on food all the time, or electricity and water, and and so your principal it never goes down because see you're not spending hardly nothing at all. You ain't spending no money on a new roof because you're using uh, the, the 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 red tile shingles because you got a, a house made out of concrete and you got it set up. You're not spending a, 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 a lot of money on power for air conditioning because you got solar panels, uh, got everything rolling there, and you're not spending no money on food. So all this money on tax, you're not under 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 any pressure, and so the uh, it, it just keeps it just keeps rolling in. I hear you. Speaking of pressure, my friends wait, and I'm gonna have to go. But well, anyway, I, it won't uh, be my nice last time. To you. Uh, as well. anybody, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, a little money I try, try to help them out. Oh man, you helped me out so much. I have so much to think about. Thank you so and much then, for your time. Uh, and then uh, you go, you gonna have to spend a little money to get your swimming pool, and so that you can collect water so you can water all your stuff. I think you're psychic and you're very intuitive, and you. You will have so much more to learn, and I promise this won't be the last time I well, see I learn, you. Well, I'm, I'm learning all the time. But see, you got you got to kind of be sneaky, see, because the government, yeah, see, I know. they don't want you collecting water. But I you know, tell, it's illegal in like 13 states right now. No one wants to believe it. But but see, when they say something, you say, well, it's my swimming pools. I got my little diving board, my little ladders. That's perfect for me. And then, but see, you got 15, 20 feet of concrete. And and then uh, uh, and then you could have uh, you could have a, a conduit system from your roofing of your house where you don't lose that water either. And yeah. it, it all keeps on draining over in that swimming pool. And then you keep using that water that's filtered to water all your stuff. Because see, if it doesn't rain, see uh, uh, if it does, if it doesn't rain, then your stuff is not really growing. But when you got when you got uh, when you're constantly uh, irrigating and watering everything, then you, everything is growing like crazy. And see, you collect those seeds and everything, and then see, you, uh, you, you, you keep on growing some more. See, you, you, if, if, if you have a drought, well, who cares? I got plenty of water. And then see, what you do is you put a roof, you put a, a roof over top of that swimming pool so the sun doesn't evaporate all your water away because you don't want to do that. Yeah. And so they say something. We say, well, uh, we, we got a roof because, see, we don't want to get skin cancer because you're swimming. If you're swimming the swim pool, you got the, the heat bearing down on you, you go get sunburned. We don't yeah. want to get sunburned. And see, so. You're smart. And, and so, uh, but you, you, the less you say to these people, the better off you'll, you'll say nothing to them. I hear you. And then, see, you collect this water. And, and so uh, that's how you do it, you know. You gotta be sneaky, but the idea being is, you get things set up where you're not, where your expenses are almost zero. You're not paying money for power. You're not paying money for water. You're not paying money for food. Everything is free. Yeah. You're not ha having to put a new roof up on your house all the time. Everything is free. And then you're growing plants that you can put in your house, flowers, everything. everything's I love beautiful. the way you're thinking. Everything is free. Everything is beautiful, and you got a couple of German shepherds, and you can sell. 
and uh, these German shepherds, I did my homework on these things. And this is what people, what, what nobody knows about. You get well-bred German shepherds and, and the super good ones now, they're selling for almost $100,000 for one dog. A hundred thousand wow. dollars. Yeah. It used to be seventy-five to eighty-five thousand. That was five years ago. It's up to one hundred thousand and more. And so, you have a well-bred dog, and and uh, and you have uh, you have some really good puppies, and like uh, like out of seven of them, maybe. Uh, uh, four or five of them, they're super good. People will pay a hundred thousand for one dog. And if it's really good, a super good dog, that dog makes may be worth two hundred thousand, two fifty, especially if it's super, super good. A really a champion, just super uh, confirmation champion. I mean uh, these high rollers they're scared about kooky people. <laughs> I mean, they're living behind steel, all of them. All these rich people, they got bulletproof limos. They're they're li they're living behind uh, 20 foot, two foot thick uh, walls and uh, uh, steel gates. And a lot of these steel gates are not bars, but they're, they're solid steel going right across. And, and, and they're on rollers. They, the, the gate is so heavy, it has to have a roller because the hinges ca can't hold them. And these people are living behind steel all the time. And they will pay, they will pay $100,000 for a German Shepherd yeah. because they got money to burn and, and having a dog, a protection dog, it's important. Yeah. And not only that, They'll buy a couple of them so they can breed them and get their money back. Definitely. They're not stupid. Listen, I do have to go. Please keep preaching. Please keep passing this message anyway, along uh, to people. Uh, but anyway, uh, that, that's something to keep in mind. I will. $100,000 or dollars. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great night. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. I, I'll see you when I see you. You will. I'm on, I'm on. I know you are. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.